Okay, thank you. So uh, I want to talk about choosing amino acid replacement models. And the background is that you want to in, uh, infer phylogenetic tree given a multiple sequence alignment. And if you do that, you might want to be interested in get, using the best model to increase your likelihood. And there's always a number of possible uh, alternatives to choose from. It could be day of, DHT, WAG, or whatever. And, and how should you choose uh, the model here? Uh, the recommended standard uh, protocol is to pick the model that uh, maximizes the likelihood, and this is uh, implemented in several different tools, but they all use brute force. So they're uh, iterating through the different models and their model variants, etc. And this is, of course, very frustratingly slow most often. Um, and I wanted to try to address this and find a shortcut to, to, to do this much faster. And I was thinking that we should be able to use the properties of the marker processes that are underlying all these actual sequence models, sequence evolution models. And these marker processes uh, that are basically almost always used uh, build on a rate matrix. And this rate matrix has uh, some nice properties, namely that you can diagonalize these matrices. So all you need is this uh, matrix V that you apply to Q, the rate matrix, and what the product you will get is a diagonal matrix with zeros on the off diagonals and the, actually the eigenvalues of this Q matrix on the diagonal. And the V matrix should, uh, you find that by computing the eigenvectors of Q. So this is, very nice and well understood model. Uh, and using a model like this, if you generate data, this pro these properties propagate down to actually the sequence alignment that you might want to be using. So if we have generated data or if we have generated or data from a process out in, in nature even, closely following this model, then we can construct a matrix which I call N by computing the number of amino acid pairs of various sorts, so A versus A, B, A versus S, etc., all through the multiple sequence alignment. So this N matrix is a count matrix. And then there exists a matrix U that can more or less, depending on how, how much data you have in N, diagonalize N. And this U matrix is uh, easy to compute directly from uh, the eigenvectors uh, of Q, actually. Uh, so, so this suggests uh, a simple method. Uh, all you need to do is to compute uh, U matrices for the different uh, models that you're considering, and then apply them one by one to see which one pr uh, produces the smallest off-diagonal elements. So basically, which product when applying U is giving what's closest to a di diagonal matrix. So I implemented this in a tool I call Model Matcher, and I've tried this on synthetic data, and uh, it works very well. Uh, it does not work as well as you would like it to I mean close to maximum likelihood, but if we look at the blue bars here, which uh, corresponds to the uh, correct predictions uh, by the, as the top prediction, you can see that with, for, very, for relatively small multiple sequence alignments, you're doing pretty well. If the alignment has 500 columns and you have 20 to 30 sequences in your alignment, uh, well, you can more or less uh, trust the, the suggestion from my predictor just like that. And this goes down, of course, when you have less data to work with. That's not very surprising. But what is nice is that if we start looking at the top five predictions from my tool, basically the top five models that generates very nice sort of diagonal matrices, then we're actually very close to the uh, prediction quality from maximum likelihood methods. So uh, this proposes that one could use this tool as a filtering uh, tool that you first apply model matcher to see if it's uh, generating, uh, giving you a, a nice low uh, score that is a good fit and good diagonalization. And if it's doing that well, we should be able to use that prediction right off. But if it's sort of a bad score, then we should uh, use the more expensive maximum likelihood framework to, 
to predict. Um, I thought that would be a good idea, but it doesn't work out quite like that. Uh, I want to point out that this tool, however, does work very nicely on biological data too, but to what extent, I don't quite know yeah, just yet. But um, my main point with this slide is to show that I, I can do this on my laptop in a couple of hours. So this is model prediction in a few seconds instead of many minutes using a maximum likelihood attempt. You can also see that it helps having a large alignment. The quality of the model matches score goes up, uh, it becomes much better. The score becomes low. And small uh, alignments, that is uh, far to the left on the x-axis, have oftentimes a, high, a very high score. So this gives the hypothesis then that, well, the low score should perhaps be a bad choice. It could give uh, uh, that's a good score, a choice that it would give a good likelihood, whereas a high score, that might be giving a worse likelihood. Uh, so I haven't had the computational resources and time to do this uh, uh, in, in thorough investigation of all that data, uh, but I've selected uh, three times 100 uh, cases of low and high, medium and high model matcher score to see what happens. And, I wanted to know how bad likelihood it is if you go by the model matcher prediction. Um, and the three sets, are, I've labeled them with colors blue, uh, orange, and green. And in the top left corner there, you can see uh, how the model matcher score on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, you have the difference in likelihood when you're using the model matcher prediction uh, compared to um, the maximum likelihood choice given by IQ3. So it looks kind of bad there at first because you have, it's clearly that in all cases the IQ3 suggestion is doing much better. But if one makes a histogram on the, the differences in scores or in likelihoods rather, uh, you'll see that most of the time the model proposed by model matcher is at least almost as good uh, as uh, uh, the maximum likelihood choice. So, so that's very uh, nice to see, see anyway. Um, but what confused me a bit was that my hypothesis about the score being informative uh, was uh, not working out. So it doesn't seem to make any difference whether I have a high or low model matcher score. Uh, the, the differences are up and down anyway. Uh, so, so that's, of course, a little bit uh, disturbing, but what could be the reason for that? I was starting to think that, well, it could be that the score is really telling us whether there is a good standard model available or not. So a high model matcher score might indicate that no uh, standard model is good enough. So how should we try that? Well, I revived an old tool of mine, which I called Model Estimator. Thanks to a, a, a talented young student uh, who re-implemented this, it became easy to use this. And instead of taking a standard model, for each multiple sequence alignment, I'm computing a tailor-made model for exactly for that uh, multiple sequence alignment. And as you can see, the graphs are now a bit turned upside down. In almost all cases, the model estimator model does much better than the standard models. Uh, and the histogram is here showing the differences. And there's just a few cases on the left there where the standard model is actually better than what we can estimate from our uh, data right off the bat. So uh, my Kind of preliminary conclusions, I'm not sure it's okay to call it conclusions then, but bear with me, is that you, if you want a quick choice, use model uh, matcher, and if you want uh, to spend a little more energy, use model estimator and uh, ditch those normal standard models. But you can come and talk to me at my poster, uh, K28, I think it was. Uh, Thank you, Lars, that was a very nice talk. 
So one of the situations where models don't do very well is when you have some, for example, very different GC content, and so you don't really have a reversible Markov process. Is there, would there be any way to sort of come up with a heuristic for that situation with your method? And do you think that when you, if we look at your idea that if you have a bad score, it means no method works, could that be the sort of data sets for which that's happening? Uh, I don't quite know just yet, but... Um, you don't? But, no, but I mean, reversibility is uh, sad, of course, but you have to live with that, uh, I, I think. And uh, you can still estimate a model that is better than the standard model. If it turned out the ones where you're not doing very well are cases where you really need a, some heterogeneous model, then that would sort of validate your method. Yeah. Because your method should fail. Give me sense. some data and we can try this. After lunch. All right, good. Thank you.